Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamu alaikum. Well, moving towards the next part, that is the transmission electron microscope. Electron microscopes are scientific instruments that use a beam of highly energetic electrons to examine objects on a very fine scale. This examination can yield information about the topography, morphology, composition, and crystallographic information. Talking about the transmission electron microscope that allows us to study the inner structures. Principle Electrons possess a wave like character. Electrons emitted into a vacuum from a heated filament with increased accelerating potential will have small wavelengths. Such higher energy electrons can penetrate distances of several microns into a solid. If these transmitted electrons could be focused, images with much better resolution. Focusing relies on the fact that electrons also behave as negatively charged particles and are therefore deflected by electric or magnetic fields. Parts of the transmission electron microscope involve the emission chamber, electromagnetic lenses, specimen chamber, photographic arrangement and vacuum system. Electron gun. The electron source consists of a cathode and an anode. Cathode. Tungsten filament which emits electrons when being heated. A negative cap confines the electrons into a loosely focused beam. The beam is then accelerated towards the specimen by the positive anode. Elect electromagnetic lenses. First of all, the condenser lens system which is located just below the electron gun assembly and its main function is to condense the electron beam on the object. In earlier versions, there were only one condenser lens but in modern transmission electron microscope, two condenser lenses are used. Objective lens. It is placed just below the specimen chamber and its main function is to capture the electron beam emerging from the object. Additional lenses. These are the lenses also known as intermediate lenses which are placed below the objective lenses. These lenses allow the magnification of diffraction pattern of electrons caused by the structure of the specimen. Projector lens. Projector lens collects the magnified image and projects in on the fluorescent screen. In transmission electron microscope, a radially symmetrically coiled of a wire is used as the lens with the current passing through it. Such virtual lenses are known as electromagnetic lenses. The coil is made up of few thousand turns of the wire having a soft iron casting around it. Current is passed through the coil to produce electromagnetic field. The focal length of the lens can be adjusted by adjusting the current passing through it. There are various types of electromagnetic lenses systems used in the transmission electron microscope just like the condenser lens, objective lens, additional lens and the projector lens etc. Specimen chamber. The specimen is to be placed exactly in the center between the condenser and the objective lens. It consists of the following parts. Airlock system. In an electron microscope, the changing of the specimen should be carried out without breaking the vacuum present in the column of the microscope. For this, the specimen chamber is provided with an airlock system. Then comes the microgrid. The sections used in the transmission electron microscope must be ultra thin having the thickness less than 1 micro. These Thin sections are to be mounted on a microgrid which is placed on the specimen holder. Specimen holder. The specimen holder is a metallic block which ensures the specimen mounted on the microgrid is in the electron path. Photographic arrangement. A plate camera that enlarges the image produced by the camera. 35 mm film camera or a digital camera that captures the image project. Vacuum system. Rotary pump creates an initial low vacuum or diffusion pump that maintains the high vacuum. Cold finger establishes high vacuum. Vacuum is developed at two levels. A standard rotary pump is used to develop initial low vacuum and for high vacuum, a metal piece is inserted in the vacuum chamber to produce high vacuum and is known as cold finger. This metal piece before inserting is treated with liquid nitrogen which traps the air molecules and gases on its cool surface. Oil diffusion pumps are used to maintain this high vacuum. This vacuum generated provides an airlock column where the specimen is mounted. It consists of a plate camera which is situated below the fluorescent screen as it enlarges the photographed image on the screen. An additional 35 mm film camera or a digital camera is used to capture the image projected on the screen. Here is a diagram shown. First of all, the electrons are projected on the anode with the help of the electron gun. Then comes the condenser lenses which passes it to the specimen. Objective aperture lens are placed below the specimen which passes it to the intermediate lenses. Then comes the projector lenses which display it on the fluorescent screen. Working of the transmission electron microscope. The original form of electron microscope, the transmission electron microscope uses a high voltage electron beam to eliminate the specimen and create an image. The electron beam is produced by electron gun commonly fitted with a tungsten filament cathode as the electron source. The electron beam is accelerated by an anode typically 100 electron volt with respect to the cathode focused by the electrostatic and electromagnetic lenses and transmitted through the specimen that is in part transparent to the electrons 
and is in part scattered them out of the beam. When it emerges from the specimen, the electron beam carries information about the structure of the specimen that is magnified by the objective lens system of the microscope. The spatial variation in this information may be viewed by projecting the magnified electron image onto a fluorescent viewing screen coated with a phosphor or scintillator material such as zinc sulfide. Alternatively, the image can be photographically recorded by exposing a photographic film or a plate directly to the electron beam or a high resolution phosphor may be coupled by means of a lens optical system or a fiber optic light guide to sensor of a digital camera. The image detected by the digital camera may be displayed on a monitor or the computer. Applications of transmission electron microscope material sciences just like morphology, structure and local chemistry of metals, investigation of crystal structures, orientations and chemical compositions of phases, precipitates and contaminators, geology, environmental sciences to study the mineral composition, to study the to toxic effect of molecular level, study of composition of mineral from ore, medical and life sciences to study the structure and composition of viruses, to study the composition of cell, biological applications of transmission electron microscope. In medicine, it is used as a diagnostic tool important in renal biopsies. Cellular tomography. Tomography refers to the imaging by suctioning through the use of any kind of penetrating wave. Information is collected and used to assemble a three-dimensional image of the target. Used for obtaining detailed 3D structures of subcellular macromolecular objects. Cancer research. Studies of tumor cells, ultrastructure, toxicology. The study of the impacts of environmental pollution on different levels of biological organization. Limitations. Many materials require extensive sample preparation to produce a sample of 1 micron which is time consuming. The sample preparation may bring structural changes in the original structure. As the field of viewing is very small so the area or the region of the sample observed may not represent the whole. Biological samples may get damaged on prolonged exposure to the electron beam. Here are some figures obtained from the transmission electron microscope. These are the figures of the nanoparticles. That's all related to transmission electron microscope. Thank you.